Okay, so today I'm going to show you a good example of a bad lifter, kind of what happens here. Um, the lifters move these valves up and down. That allows uh, gas or um, the exhaust to enter or to escape the um, cylinder. As you can see, this one's up, this one's down. And you notice when we get to this one, look at all that liquid right there. It looks like oil and gas. So that's fouling out the plug, which is causing me to have a misfire on cylinder number five. Now the question is, why is that there? Well, the first thing is to find out exactly what that is, so we'll pull a sample of it, make sure it is gasoline. The only thing that's above this is the, um, uh, intake and on this particular model the intake doesn't have oil flowing through it so either we have a bad valve stem seal or like I said we have a bad lifter considering it was making a lot of tapping noise most likely it's going to be the lifter but I'm going to break it all the way down and show you the cause of this right here so here's the other cylinder here and you can see it, it's clear it's got a little oil around it but that's nothing compared to that right there all right so now that we found that we have um, liquid down in the cylinder, the next step for this would be to pull the valve cover and see what the valve train is looking like. So we'll pull that and then we'll come back and see what we got. Okay, so as I showed you earlier, one of the issues that we had was the fueling piling up on the intake side here. As you can see, that puddle of fuel. So the first step in doing that, once you do, is you pull your valve cover. Now, from the noise, I figured that it was something to do with the valve not opening and closing for the misfire, but I did not figure this. And what do we have here? What we have is a push rod that is out of place, and it's not making contact to push the valve down. Now. A little bit of insight here. This is a newly rebuilt motor, so this could be an indication of a bent push rod. The fact that it's not connected, if you can see that there, or it just could have been something that was visually missed or in the build process. I mean, it's not uncommon for a mechanic to overlook things when they build stuff, but. Most likely it's going to be a bad, um, worst, the worst come the worst, it'll be a bad lifter. And if that's the case, you're going to have to pull the head off, change the lifter out, and put everything back together. Best case scenario is it's just a bad push rod, um, or, um, possibly the car was revved up and it didn't have full oil pressure. And if that happens, then and the lifters aren't fully um, pumped up, then that has a, leaves a lot of slack in your drivetrain, which could cause this particular issue here. The way this showed up is it was a lot of knocking, and the knocking just got worse and worse and worse and worse, and it continually gave a code of cylinder five misfire. Some people say, "Well, rev it up. Do you still hear the knocking? Or put some sea foam in it." Well, folks, sea foam is not going to fix that. <laughs> Any type of oil treatment or any that other stuff is not going to fix that problem right there. You have to have a mechanic who knows how to go in there and fix that issue there. All right, I'm gonna get a little more light on it so we can see it better. I don't know if that's better or worse light. But there you see. You can see the very top of the head of the um, you can see the top of the head of the push rod, which is if I can get this bag going right steady. This here. You see that? Now actually when the motor's running that's gonna be moving up and around and that's gonna make a heck of a noise in the car. But what it's not going to do is activate this valve. With this valve not activated working, what's going to happen is you're going to have fuel to pile up into the intake. 
as it's done here. Okay? So, what do we do? First thing we do is we pull that rod, that push rod out, and make sure that it's straight and level. If the push rod's bent, go ahead and just get you a new push rod. I mean, these things are cheap. I mean, heck, I don't think these things are cost no more than $2 a piece. Now you can see we can slide that right on out, okay? None of the other push rods can even come out. And as you can see, once we move that push rod out of place, we can just simply slide that <laughs> rocker arm back over top of the valve like it's supposed to be. Now, to, re to replace that push rod, we will actually have to pull um, the valve train here. We'll have to pull this here. Okay, and be careful not to misplace your other push rods when putting it back together. So we're going to put this thing together and then we'll start her up, fire up, and see what we get on our test drive. We'll test run, and um, if the ticking goes away and our misfire goes away, we know we've got our issues solved. Okay, one of the things here that um, I noticed in repairing this car is... Once you, you don't have to necessarily take the whole valve train off, you can loosen it up. But in loosening it up, what you want to do is make sure you center this rod, okay? And you want to have these up while you're tightening it down. And, you know, if you could have another person to help you, it'd be great, because then you could have them hold that as you tighten the nuts, the um, lug nuts down here. Well, they aren't lug nuts, but you know what I mean. So you can tighten those down. But after you tighten it down, you want to make sure that these are in place. Okay? There's a little piece on the other side. When you do it in the engine, it's tilted at an angle, so it's very easy for um, those to fall out of place there. So I'm going to tighten those down, and then I'm going to put it back together and start her up. Okay, so now that we got everything back together, we're going to give it a test fire, see what she does, see how it sounds. It's probably going to smoke a little bit while burning off that extra fuel and cleaning stuff that was sprayed into it. Let's try out and see what she does. Still got a ticking left there. 